long time ago. Yeah. You write for the paper? You, no, uh, you for the TV station. TV station. But, uh, Why would I say write for the paper? His <laughs> cameras, you know, it's this guy who writes for a paper. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> First one that turns me in. If the Germans came here, she would say, the Jew lives right over there. That's Don Rickles. That house over there with the herring on the door. That's his house. She's the first one that turned me in. She's got that kind of personality. Got that Nazi kind of smile. Okay. <laughs> well, well, Don, let's go back to uh, the end of World War II, the Philippines. Uh, you're in the Navy uh, doing parodies of some of the officers that you served with. You really know about yeah, yeah. me, yeah. Well, how did those guys uh, react to that? <laughs> well, <laughs> twice they put me in the torpedo tank and fired me. Uh, no, they, I, I was just a kid then, uh, 18 years old, and I did a lot of jokes. You had to do a lot of jokes, there was a lot of shooting, you know. Yeah. And while we were ducking the bullets, you had to do a couple of laughs, you know. And we had a guy, who, I'll never forget it, he was from Minnesota. He was uh, our commanding, uh, well, navigator. He always had his hat a little crooked, a little off to the left. He always had one of these kind of looks, you know. He always looked a little dazed. And I said, well, we're not going to get out alive. This guy don't know what time it is. And I always told him, sir, your hat's crooked. And like it, he always fixed it for me. So I was the kind of guy that would say, that. Said, you hear what he said to the officer? I'd say anything, you know. And I walked around the, the ship and was the class clown. We had 300 men, and they were all kind of guys like this, you know, oh, let's get in there and let's get those Japanese guys, let's get them. And being Jewish, I was in the back paying a guy to go in the front so I wouldn't get hit. You know, it's a long time. Well, some of your early gigs, uh, the clubs you worked in, weren't some of these clubs owned by guys who had kind of shady backgrounds, maybe, maybe mob connections? Well, I wouldn't say that. That's not a good thing to say. I wouldn't say that. He's only kidding. It's no mobs. No mobs. We know nothing about mo mobs. <laughs> nothing about mobs. Uh, look at that bullet. Two in the chest. No, those guys, there were stories about that, yeah. but they were never around. They, most of the time, they were directing the club from the prison. <laughs> <laughs> they had a phone in their cells, and they used to call up and say, get him off the stage. <laughs> but there was that, that was just all rumor. Yeah. <laughs> That's why my aunt, I haven't found her yet. She <laughs> took a drive out to Sheep's Head Bay, and we haven't heard from her. <laughs> well, when you look back at, at uh, movies you've made, uh, movies that had maybe surreal sets to work on, Beach Blanket Bingo. Why uh, are you doing this, Mark? <laughs> did I offend your family? What did I do to your family? Why would you bring up Beach Blanket Bingo? Or kiss the beach ball and watch it roll down the sand? Or net full of cello comes home for the high holy days? Why, why would you do that? Frankie Avalon is a guy dressed as a woman. Who cares? I did those movies in 15 days. 15 days, running up and down the beach like a moron. Hey, guys, here comes Big Daddy. And Frankie Avalon, who's now 78 if he's a day with the black, jet black hair walking around going, well, hey guys, let's up surf, surf's up, surf, who cares? But I did it, because I was a lonely kid. Ran around the beach and it was a long day, long day. Beach blanket, bingo. You should get a slap for that, Mark. There was no call to bring that up. My career was going good till you had to bring that up. Well, I don't say that you're wearing a stupid tie. Did I say that? I never said that. That tie is stupid. He made a knot and he spilled a bowl of soup on it. They called it a tie. Hey. Okay, well, I'd snap out of it, Mark. Now, come on, the interview's got to keep moving. You're starting to stumble. Well, uh, <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting a spastic attack here. Uh, well, uh, 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 turning to uh, Toy Story, Don. Oh, yeah, that's uh, one of the heavy movies of the season. Now there's, now, there's a movie that has a message called, If You Watch This, You're a Lonely Kid. <laughs> well, when they first showed you the Mr. Potato Head, what'd you think? I threw up. <laughs> I couldn't believe they wanted me to do this stuff, but I did it. Now, Mr. Potato Head is great, Mark. He's a character that everybody knows, and I made him famous, and he made me famous, and now it's, it's going to skyrocket my whole career. Nobody knows what I sound like or what I look like, but I'm in this thing three years of my life, boom, boom, boom. And now we're just waiting for the premiere. When I run down the aisle and the kids come and put candy on my pants, I hate that dumb little pin. Candy on the pants, I hate that. Get the candy off the pants, you little pin. Yeah, Mr. Potato Head! Shut up, you little boom. And I'm right in the mouth. I hate those kids. <laughs> you know, Disney collectibles have become a really big business. What kind of things did you keep from your, uh, your experience with this movie? Well, a couple old broads that I know from way back. <laughs> Got them locked in a cell and they're just laying there waiting for me to make a move. But <laughs> my wife doesn't know about it. She's just upstairs counting the money. No, I don't, I don't collect too many things, Mark. I'm not one of those collectors, you know. And certainly I don't collect anything from Toy Story. <laughs> Stop playing with toys at my age, you know. Guys come around in the white jackets and go, Mr. Rickles, do you have a few minutes? Just step in the truck, don't worry about it. 
They put those little cuffs on you and they take you away. Uh, you know, I got a, a question about one of your uh, other movies. I uh, interviewed Donald Sutherland uh, about <laughs> the movie Kelly's Heroes. Yeah. Uh, Did he know he was talking to you? <laughs> yeah, he's great. Yeah. He's on a, he's on a planet. Uh, in fact, John Landis, wasn't he a production He's another guy out of that? control. Yeah. Yeah. He did a picture called, uh, last year, I did a picture two years ago called Innocent, Innocent Blood, Blood with Robert yeah. Loge. Yeah. It's a great picture. Yeah. It opened at my house. <laughs> <laughs> they ran it for 20 minutes in the basement, and that was the end of it. <laughs> Spent five weeks in Pittsburgh listening to, ah! and guys came with lunch pails, walked right by me, went right to work, right on the set. <laughs> Well, when you made that movie, I mean, uh, uh, Kelly's Heroes, yeah. did you think at the time that was going to become like a classic war movie? No, I had no idea. In fact, Clint Eastwood, I thought, was a big, big star until I found out how he lived. Pickup <laughs> truck and a dog. And his dog always came by my trail and did one of these jobs. You know? <laughs> I didn't think that was funny, but he kept doing that. You know? <laughs> but I had a wonderful experience. And, and Kelly's Heroes was great. Working with Clint was really great. And uh, he's like De Niro, you know, like full of fun. Yeah. If you, you know, if you don't have any friends, you call them up. And they nod off while you talk. Hey, Clint, how you doing? Good, good. And one last question. Out at the buffet right now, they have all these baked potatoes. Uh, will you ever look at a baked potato the same way? Mm -hmm. Why don't you shut up, Mark? Why don't you get yourself a decent job and stop bothering people? Don't ever come around again. I never want to see you again, you understand? You really annoyed me. I thought I was going to like you, and you spoiled the whole day for me. But you keep your chin up, and thanks for finding out about my Navy experience. Get out, get up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my life's complete now. <laughs>